Welcome back to the terminal element. When we last left off, I had inserted a USB line isolator in between my radio transceiver and the Raspberry Pi computer in my Yukon's communications terminal to try to get rid of some of the interference I was seeing. And that worked great for like 10 days until all of a sudden the audio turned really choppy and I couldn't really tell what was going on. So I rebooted the computer. That didn't do anything. So, hello. So then I went through and I just grabbed all the connections and pushed them together. I didn't feel anything loose, but all of a sudden it started working again. So I don't know what to do with that, but maybe just, you know, remember that next time you encounter some issue, you will encounter issues that you have to troubleshoot. And so try rebooting the computer, check all your connections, and maybe you'll... Coming to you live from the barnyard. So I had an issue last week I also wanted to report to you where all of a sudden my signal between work and home just dropped out. We weren't making the trip there or back. And sometimes that happens and I really can't explain why. We're using two meter, so that shouldn't be bouncing off of the atmosphere or anything, but for some reason it gets hot during the day. Sometimes it just, you know, drops out. So in that case, I switched to Thor Micro. And we talked a little bit about this, I think in our notifications video, Thor Micro will punch through when other signals won't get through, when other modes won't make the trip. It's a very robust, narrow band little mode, and so I switched my home's terminal over with an RSID through the FL Digi program, the Reed Solomon identifier, and that did make the trip, and it switched it over to Thor Micro, and I was able to continue texting with my wife throughout the workday. Unfortunately, Thor Micro is not a complete solution. It will work in those types of situations where FSQ just won't make the journey, but this told me that I needed to hasten my progress towards getting us onto JSA call in addition to FL Digi. And so over these last few days, I have been working at exactly that. And I have something really cool to show you. So I'm here at my place of work and I've just got a Slim Jim antenna running through the window and I am reaching home. You'll recall that's about 45 or 50 miles without line of sight on two meter with just this walkie talkie. This little walkie-talkie, and not only that, but on low power, which is half of a watt. There it is. There's the Raspberry Pi computer. I did learn that I need to get a fan case for this because it got a little hot and throttled its speed. And then all of a sudden, JSA call wasn't doing decodes very well. But I, I could not ask for better performance. Half of a watt, 45 miles over mountains. This is, this is astonishing to me. Now, I thought I was going to have to use this, and, you know, sure, certainly this worked. And, in fact, oddly, this Chinese radio was a little bit more sensitive of a receiver than this Japanese radio. But I didn't need anywhere near the power. I think a half a watt is as low as I can go without damaging my antenna. Now, being able to run JSA call allows me to do relays. It allows me to do message storage. I can do signal-to-noise ratio requests. This is the direction that I need to go. Now, I don't want to get rid of FSQ. It does have a lot of utility to me that I don't think JSA call completely replaces, but we are running them both alongside each other, and so far, things are working pretty good. So, I'm still in the experimental phase of running both JSA call and FL Digi on the same terminal, and it's working really good for a few of my terminals, but there's one terminal that's giving me problems, and so until I iron out all of the wrinkles and learn all the lessons that I need to learn from the failures that I am constantly encountering with this project, I don't feel good about making a tutorial video quite yet. But if you want to skip ahead, you can take a look at our pie checklist that I have linked in the show notes. I've got all of the setup steps that I go through for how I set up my terminals, and why don't you go ahead and try it out? And let me know what works and let, let us know what doesn't work in the comments here. Let's keep this information sharing going. I'm learning from you and you're learning from me. Join me in the next episode of The Terminal Element when I also have something else really cool that I want to show you.